Hello everyone, so my name is Yannick Prinvo, I'm a solution architect around Microsoft 365, founder of my own company, and today I will speak about site designs and um, how can power user can actually use them. So just a quick reminder of what site designs are. There are, uh, there are actually uh, standard capability in, for site provisioning in SharePoint Online, and basically they have the same purpose as classic template that we had in the past, but they are techni technically a bit different. They are not a base template um, on which the assets are created from, but they are actually a sequence of actions of customization that you want to apply after the asset is created. So um, it allowed to achieve ba basic provisioning, but for more complex scenarios, I would Definitely recommend still to go to the PMP template uh, provisioning uh, solution because they they are more advanced and so the site design won't be the good fit for more complex scenario. And so they are composed of site scripts that are the building blocks of the site design and they are expressed in the JSON format. To manage them. On the official documentation, Microsoft documentation, you will see a few ways, uh, the, primarily the REST API, and also with the SPO management shell, PMP PowerShell, or Office 365 CLI. So basically, there are technical ways to manage them, to create them, edit them, add them, and so on. And there is, for now at least, no out of the box user interface available. Um, from, from Microsoft. So design designs and side script, those are the two concepts that uh, we have to know about when working with side designs. A side design is actually an entity that has some properties and it has a preview image, it has a name and so on, and it is based on one of the two base templates uh, in modern SharePoint sites, so modern team or communication site. And We'll see in a minute in the demo how it looks in the in the SharePoint interface, but we won't go too deep on this for now. And the site script, on the other hand, are the building blocks uh, of site design, and so they have a name and description, but the they have overall um, a content that is expressed in JSON, something like this. And this JSON contains actually um, sequence of site action, so a sequence of all the customizations and, and, and provisioning bits that you want to apply to your tenant. So let's see, for example, we have a site design and we have three site scripts here. And um, the, the site design is actually basically a container that will, uh, not really a container, but an entity that will be linked to different site designs. And the, the uh, different side scripts, sorry, side scripts um, live on their own and side design live on their own as well, but they are actually associated together. For instance, here we have an example of a marketing side design and three side scripts with different purposes, one for applying branding customization, one for the information architecture, and another one for installing, installing application on the target site. But those building blocks are actually interesting because if, for example, we add a new site design here, we can actually reuse the bits uh, and link them to another site design. And site designs for power users. So power users actually have good command of SharePoint concepts, so they know what the, the what are the concepts of SharePoint, what are the list, content type, fields, the, all the basics of SharePoint. They know how to use them, but they know how to use them mainly from from the from the UI from the SharePoint interface. And so, for user are not IT pros, they might be, but they might not be. And so, what PowerShell or what Office 365 CLI mean for them? Not much. And obviously, they are neither uh, pro developers. So, the REST API and JSON might be very difficult for, for them to, to, to use. And so with 
all that in mind, they actually might want any way to um, to be able to automate the customization that they have done on one side. They want probably to use them uh, on a, on another side and uh, to automate the way that those customizations are provisioned to other sites as well. And I came up then with a, a solution that I called Site Design Studio. It is actually now a V2 that I will demo today. The, it there was a V1 from already two years ago that was a single web part, um, a single SPFX web part. This new um, application is uh, so uh, a world application, actually uh, an app path page, SPFX application that will come with its own SharePoint Mountain site. So a dedicated site to host this application. And it allows to basically manage site design and site script and overall site script without really the need to understand uh, JSON. There are some uh, exception for this for this because some of the of the actions are more complex so but the the the, the main point is that they won't have to do any PowerShell or, or to use the CLI and they won't uh, need to 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 know anything about the rest API it, it is an open, open source application that is hosted on the PNP github repository so the URL is here so but time for demo now and let's go to it already so it is how it looks like the the, the home uh, home page of this application so you see it is a dedicated site for it so we have on the home page we have um, the, the the preview of, of some site designs available in my tenant and we have uh, the preview of some sites with available already in my tenant so if i Add a site design, for example, you see that I have this editor here that I can call whatever I want. I have to select uh, if I want it to be based on team site or communication site. It is one of the two main base templates that are used. There are not more. Um, and some description. And also we have the possibility to add a preview image for example i can use this one that is actually this image is hosted in this particular site it is one of the benefits of having um, a dedicated site for the application so we don't really have to 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 put an image from elsewhere and take care of hosting it um, so if i save this like this uh, and i go for instance on the sharepoint home page you can see that here I see my new site design that were not, was not existing. But I won't use it as this because it, actually it is not different from a standard um, site because I did not put any customization in it. And to put some customization, as I said in the, in the slide, we have to associate it actually to site script. And so for now, I have on, only one available um, site script, that is this one. And I can add it like this, but we won't use it uh, for, for now. This is this one we can delete, actually. So from the site script, we have the, the quite similar interface. We can add a new one, and we go, we go with a blank one for now. So site script uh, demo test. And here I have also a picture to add the actions uh, to my site script. So all the capabilities of provisioning and customizing that the site script offers. So I have, uh, for instance, I can create a list. I can say my list. And you see on the right that the code is automatically reflecting the the change that I'm doing on the UI. Uh, on my list, I will add a, sub, oh, a flash here. Okay. Uh, on my list, I will add um, uh, a content type. 
and I will call my content type. But as you might have understood already, uh, it is a script. So I mean a sequence of action. So and it will be added to a brand new site. So this content type won't be existing in my new site. So I have to add it as well. So I can create a site content type here and say type is it will be inheriting the item standard content type. It won't be hidden, but just to be sure, I will toggle this thing. Uh, group, yeah, okay. And so another thing that you might have uh, noted is that this is uh, another sequence. So this content type that I'm using in the list, uh, I, I have to create it before I actually create the list. So I will reorder the thing here like this. And I will do the same with uh, a side column. A side column that will be a text field done. Okay. And it will be required, yes, and group. And again, I have to um, reorder because I will add this side column in my content type. So what was the name of the system? Okay, okay. And you see that I have the JSON that has been generated. So now I can save. And with this uh, site script saved, uh, actually it is already saved in my tenant, but uh, it is not associated to anything. So the application proposed me if I want to already associate it or not. So I can say yes, and I will say I want to use a new site design. And here it is, we see it is already here. So I, I will try another feature and see how it works with the actual site design applied to the site. So for this one, I will uh, actually go to site script again and add a new site script. And you see that here I have another option that is from site. So I have another site that I created earlier, a simple site with some customization with a, a custom list here, research areas and some theming, etc. And I will, will use it from here, so from site. It is called research, so I can search for it. And you see that I have to specify the list that I want to include. And I will say I want to include this research area. And I can do add site script here. And you see that everything is already grabbed from the SharePoint API. From the SharePoint, there is an API actually that is used to extract a site script a site script from an existing site. So test PNP as the name test PNP here. I will save it and I will say, okay, I want to do associate it to a new site uh, design. So team PNP, I will say it is a team site because it's the same template as my previous site. And from here, I will add uh, an image from my computer. So let's use this. And okay, I think I'm good to go. Let's save it. And so from my original site, you see that I have this research area uh, list that has some column formatting on the list and um, as um, a custom content type. We don't see it here. Uh, we, we see the fields actually, but we don't see that it is, it is a custom one. And so from here, let me just refresh the page. I can use create a site. 
select team site. And so from demo PNP, you see my preview image. Demo P01. And we can click next. And finish. And so from here, it depends. Sometimes we don't see it actually. There is a banner that says that there is a site script or site design applying. We don't see it here, but from the site design, we will probably see it. Yes. And yes, there was a, um, a fail action from here, but each, it should have applied the, the other customization. So if I refresh the page, we see actually so we have the branding we have the research area list that has been created and if i you see that i have my custom um, content type the item is still there because the extract api doesn't remove anything it just add the 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 added content from the original one so that's And you see, you should see that it has the um, few formatting on the list as well. Okay, and it, it is basically it, but there is a, some other features also from this one. Let's see that, for example, we want to, uh, we have done all this work on this uh, development tenant and we want to apply it to, uh, to the production customer, uh, the customer production tenant we can actually use a feature that is export here. So we have a way to extract it with PNP PowerShell or as raw JSON as PNP PowerShell, uh, Office 365 CLI PowerShell or with Bash. And actually you have a demo here, uh, uh, download, sorry, download button that you can click and you get the file with the JSON and the PowerShell script to execute on another tenant. And lastly, if you don't know where to start, you can try actually another feature that I had it recently, recently, it is the from sample. So you might know this site here, um, the samples from the PNP repository. And you see in the samples, a lot of samples already existing. And from the site design studio, you can click from sample and you see all the samples available some of them might not work because it actually uh, assumes that the JSON file, there is one JSON file that is the site script at the root of the sample. Uh, and it's not the case for all of them. But for instance, if I take the first one, I see the readme file from the GitHub and I see the JSON and I can click, I can click as at new type script and I have the content already there. And I think that's it for me. Excellent, excellent, Yannick. Really cool stuff. Uh, we do do apologize. I once again talked too long uh, on the community call, so it took slightly longer today than expected. But really, really cool stuff. And the the GitHub repo was already shared uh, in the in the chat. We'll share it in the notes as well. So for those who are watching the YouTube video, the recording, go to the YouTube video notes and the video reference, and and you will get access on the sample. And and there's I think you had really good guidance on how to set it up and and get started on it, right? Yes, there is actually uh, um, uh, a readme file that tells just a, a couple of parameters to, to, to put to a partial script and uh, yeah. it applies everything uh, normally, yep. smoothly. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Yannick.